Hi, um, my name's Francesca Wiley. I'm an artist in Spain. Um, this is my studio at El Retiro, which is the retreat. And at the moment, it's very hot. So apologies for my attire. Um, and also that will affect what I'm doing today. Um, so I just started recently experimenting with cold wax medium and I absolutely love it. It's really wonderful stuff. So this is one of the paintings that I've done and you can build it up in layers. I tend to start off with an acrylic layer, a base coat, um, and then probably three or four layers on top of that. But one thing I wanted to experiment with was pigment sticks and I have difficulties of ordering art supplies here. I'm in Andalusia in a very remote rural area, so nowhere near an art shop. And also I was pretty horrified at the price of pigment sticks. I actually made my own um, cold wax medium, which is basically made from beeswax pellets, um, which you heat over a double boiler um, and then mix in um, thinners, odorless thinners I used, and um, a thixotropic medium or an alkyd medium. There are recipes available and I'll put a link below the video to the one that I used, um, roughly. Um, so it's, a, it's, slight, it's got a slight colour to it. You can, I'm actually waiting for some to arrive and I couldn't wait for this to arrive so I ordered some beeswax in the meantime, um, which will be a bit clearer and probably less lumpy. Um, but actually I'm very pleased with how this is turning out. Um, so I thought I had a look at recipes, see if I could find out a way of making um, the actual pigment sticks, because as I said, they were a bit prohibitively expensive and I can't get them very easily in Spain. So I thought I'd have a go, I couldn't really find a very good recipe, so I thought I'd have a go making some here. And here's some I baked earlier today. So they haven't really gone hard yet, they've been in the fridge um, and they're hard enough to use and in fact I did use the white one earlier to make this lovely couple of marks on the painting behind. Um, but eventually, just like the wax medium, when it dries there will be a bit of a hard coat around the outside of the sticks. Um, but I really loved the colours, so I'll come a bit closer so you can see. Um, and I basically, um, I'm restricted by what colours I've got, obviously. Um, but I'll explain that better in a second. So the ratio that I'm using to make this is basically um, two teaspoons of the cold wax, one and a half teaspoon of pigment. Um, and these are really good and I happen to have various pots of these pigments and I haven't got any black so I can't make black um, at the moment um, but one of my favourite colours and I was really excited to see that I have got some Prussian blue um, which I'll be used heavily um, behind in this painting. So together with the pigment which as I said the, uh, the rough ratio because I'm not an expert it's me experimenting um, is one teaspoon, sorry, two teaspoons of the cold wax, one to one and a half teaspoons of pigment, and one teaspoon of oil paint. So I've been, I mean, I could mix up my own colours, obviously, um, but I've been trying to, to more or less keep to um, the colours that are um, in the pigments. The yellow actually was Indian yellow and cadmium yellow, so it's, it's slightly different. Um, so I had a cadmium orange, cadmium red, and a titanium white, um, which I made earlier. And I'm just going to have a go now at making Prussian blue. So I could be using um, glass, but I've just got this plastic lid that I'm using as a palette. And roughly mixing two teaspoons 
on here. I'm not too worried, there's a little bit of red from before, but I've got rid of most of it. And nothing terribly scientific about how I'm doing this or the order I'm doing it in. So, oh my goodness, this colour is amazing. So deep. That is one and a half teaspoons of the pigment Prussian Blue, which has probably been one of my favourite colours since I was a child. And again, I don't really need to measure this out precisely. Um, of oil paint. It's a bit stiff to squeeze. Okay. And the reason I thought about using pigment was because I, I realised that it was going to be too wet without it. And I'm just lift this up a little bit using the palette knife squidge all of this together and quite quickly the pigment starts to mix in to the wax and pressing down quite hard because I really want to make sure that there's no impurities in my wax and in the crayon so we've got a nice even mixture. I did actually use pellets of wax and I noticed that some weren't properly melted. So doing this on a warm day in Spain <laughs> is creating an even better paste. So very quickly to do, that's kind of got a nice buttery texture. So second palette knife to scrape and you can see I've got a really lovely dark Prussian blue and I smeared a little bit on some paper and see coming through there and it's a very transparent colour so it's great for glazes and the nice thing about using cold wax is that you can see the layer below okay so I've got a nice lump here and this is the tricky bit it's easy up to this bit save the bit to use later. Okay. So next I've just got a little bit of cling film and I'm going to try and roll it very roughly into So I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. It's a very rough shape. Don't worry too much about these being perfect. And trying to flatten the ends off a little bit. Make it a little bit thinner than that. Okay, so there we have the stick. And this is going to go into the fridge. So about three hours time I'll take it out. And all I've used is a bit of parchment paper, baking paper, whatever you want to call it, which is slightly greasy so it won't stick to the crayons um, or to the sticks. Rolled it around and then in the middle it's then attached with a bit of tape. Basically that is ready to go, I could use that now, but I think 
it's getting a little bit warm again, so I might put them back in the fridge.